Hello, today I'd like to talk about how to get powerful in Fallout 76, specifically in combat. I'll cover offensive gear in this video, so we'll be talking about weapon mods, which legendary effects are the best, and things like drugs that you can use for a short boost. Gear is leveled, so after level 50, you can get more powerful by just picking up higher level items. But after level 50, your gear will stay the same, so a level 50 player has access to the same gear as a level 800 player. The higher level player will have better gear just because they've had more chances to get better legendaries, but fundamentally it's all the same gear. Doing more damage is more about how you structure your character than anything else. Defensive gear will be covered in the next video to keep this one from getting too long, so subscribe and hit the bell button if you want to be notified when the next part gets released. But before you get too deep into the details, make sure you've thought about what playstyle you like. Do you like sniping from stealth? Or massive firepower? Or do you just like chainsawing people's faces off like the maniac you are? Your style plays a big part in how you structure your character and their gear. One of the most important decisions is whether to rely on bats or not. A lot of gear only benefits one style, so getting an extra critical damage legendary is useless if you don't use bats. Going for a bats critical style is very powerful, but it does require you to invest in it. If you use heavy weapons and power armor, you shouldn't be using bats as your main approach because it drains your fusion cores pretty fast. On the other hand, high damage, low fire rate weapons that you hit fire at close or medium range benefit from the accuracy bats gives you. So something like a plasma caster is normally a bit mediocre without bats because the shot has trouble time and it flies slowly so it's hard to hit enemies. But it's just great with bats headshots because the only thing that matters is the chance to hit. For weapons where you snipe or aim down sights, it's better to do it manually rather than using bats. But the feature to hold your breath for more accuracy also drains fusion cores so it's not a good idea if you use power armor. Melee is definitely viable too, but generally you want to be using automatic weapons like chainsaws, auto axes and rippers. Single hit weapons like super sledges are doable, but they're not as effective as automatic ones. There's also the special option of taking advantage of low health builds for extra damage. This is known as a bloody build and is named after the bloody legendary property of weapons that gives you more damage to lower your health. Basically it's a glass cannon style, but it does allow you to do the most damage in the game. Keep your style in mind when designing on your perks and your kit. Always mod your weapons. You might want to hold off on some mods until you've got max level weapons, if the resources are rare or expensive. But generally you should be modding your weapons to some degree once you start to run into tank your enemies. Your number one priority should be receivers, because they increase damage. There's different types that give you a bit more damage, plus bonuses that fit different styles, like better hip fire accuracy or more critical damage. If you take part in the event to defeat the Scorched Queen Beast, you have a chance to get the plans for Prime Receivers. These do more damage than normal receivers, but you require Ultrasight ammunition. Make sure you know how to get enough special ammunition before you prime your weapons. If you have trouble doing that, see my separate guide on how to get ammo. Barrels give you more range and accuracy. Generally more accuracy is always better, but the extra accuracy might not be as important if you tend to fight at close range. Bigger magazines are usually the better choice for any weapon. A good choice is to go for armor piercing magazines if your weapon allows it, especially for things like shotguns that don't have armor piercing perks. Similar principles apply to melee weapons. Go for damage first, then other useful properties. Gear can have up to 3 legendary effects, and they get randomly chosen from 3 tiers for legendaries. There are some unique weapons that come with fixed properties, but generally the best weapons are randomly rolled. The first tier for weapons generally increases your damage. The best one for raw damage increases aristocrats. It gives you a straight 50% damage bonus if you have more than 29,000 caps. As long as you are not spending caps like water, that should be pretty easy to get. There's a bunch of other effects that also give you a plus 50% damage bonus, but against specific enemies, like mutant slayers against mutants or troubleshooters against robots. They're alright, but Aristocrats is just better because it applies to all enemies. Other effects like Furious only give you up to plus 25% damage bonus. They're generally not worth looking at, but instigating is useful for sniper type weapons because it doubles the damage of your first hit against enemies at full health, so it might help you get those one shot kills that you're looking for. 
Blood is a special case for low health builds, but if you do go for that, it gives you the biggest damage bonus. You can get plus 80% damage if you keep your health at 20% or less. There's also a couple of other properties to keep in mind even if they don't directly upgrade your damage. Anti-armor is great against bosses, but you should keep in mind that it's multiplicative with other bonuses. So if perks were to give you a 40% reduction, anti-armor will not give you a total 90% reduction. It will give you a 70% reduction because it halves the remaining 60% armor. Still very useful, but not as useful as it might seem at first. Two shot indirectly increases your damage by giving you a second bullet and a bit more damage overall. But it spreads the damage across two bullets, so enemy armor is actually more effective. It does double explosive damage, so it's great if you have explosive buffing perks. But it also seriously decreases your accuracy. It's a bit of a mixed bag overall. Vampires does not give you any damage bonuses, but it heals you every time you hit enemies. It works best with automatic weapons like machine guns, and you should always aim to have one on your weapon wheel. The new love tap you get from the new Couture event is the only guaranteed vampiric weapon drop, and it's worth getting unless you have a better one already. Explosive is a good one in this tier. The explosions give you a plus 15 of your weapon's base damage and have an area of effect. But watch out because you can damage yourself, so the best to use in power armor and should be avoided if you're using a low health build. Unfortunately, they don't cause physics effects on enemies like in Fallout 4, but the extra damage is good to have and it's great for tagging enemies during events. The demolition of perk will also increase the damage the explosions do, while the grenadier effect will increase the explosive radius. Hitman's is another good one. It gives you a 25% damage bonus if you're aiming down sights. It works well if you play using cover or using power armor. If you use VATS, then there's several effects that you should be looking at. VATS Enhanced makes you more accurate and is great if you use powerful single shot weapons like plasma casters or rifles. Luck is great if you've invested in a VATS critical style. An extra 50% damage is not something to scoff at. Inertial gives you back your AP after a kill, so you can shoot more often but you can get the same effect by using consumables like coffee instead, so it's not essential. Rapid indirectly helps you cause more damage by firing 25% faster. It works best with the heavy weapons like machine guns. Hitmas is better, but you do kill as fast with Rapid. Even though it costs a bit more ammo, the net result is basically the same. Melee weapons get the melee speed and power attack properties that give you 40% bonuses to attack speed and power attack damage. All automatic melee weapon attacks are power attacks, so both effectively give you an extra 40% damage bonus. There's no damage bonus perks on this tier, but if you use VATS, then VATS enhanced in this tier reduces the AP cost of each shot, and Lucky helps you get more criticals. Rapid allows you to reload faster though, and that can be beneficial when using weapons with low magazine sizes. The stealth field effect from Ghost can be useful if you're using a low health build or sniping from the shadows. Melee damage also increases with strength, so you can get a 10% damage bonus if you get that legendary property. But there's better ones, so it's not that useful unless you're going all in on melee. It's not a combat effect, but reduced weight is a very good effect here. Particularly for rifles, because they have no weight reduction perk. It reduces the weapons to 10% of the normal weight, so it indirectly helps by allowing you to carry more weapons to suit different situations, more ammunition, and more grenades. All of which help you be more effective in combat. Drugs and food can also buff your capabilities for a short period of time. You can stack multiples of the same type as long as they don't have the same property. So only one food that buffs strength, but you can combine food and alcohol to give you two buffs. This is not an exhaustive list and will cover the major bonuses only. The point is to highlight that food and drugs can make a pretty big difference to the damage you do. Food usually gives you a buff for 30 to 60 minutes. Most of the buffs are defensive, but if you use melee, you can buff your strength and melee damage. Strength gives you a plus 10% to melee damage for each point, so you can get a pretty big buff if you use melee. Stingwing fillets and mutant hound chops are two that you can get easily enough. Drinking alcohol is also a good idea for strength and hit point buffs, but their effects last for a few minutes only. But if you use bats, then you can get quite a lot of AP refresh from food. Much of it is easily accessible by our camp machines. Popcorn, Nuka Candy and Coffee all have machines that produce them so they're easy to get from your or other player camps. Drugs give you a pretty big boost but only for a few minutes so they're very good for situations like bosses or events where you do a lot of fighting in a short time span. If you use melee you can again buff your strength and melee damage with buff out and other chemicals made from it. Excel is also an option but it's a bit more scarce. 
Psychonic's products give you a general damage and resistance buff. They're good with any style, but again, they only last for a few minutes. You're not going to do it all the time, but stacking bonuses from food and drugs can be very useful when the situation calls for it. Getting good gear is an important first step on maxing out your damage. Your weapons, their mods, and their legendary effects are a starting point, but you can also get some pretty big temporary buffs by using consumables. Once you've got enough weapons, the next step is making sure you've got enough defense to survive long enough to use them. We'll cover that in the next video, so see you then. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. Let me know what you thought about it in the comments. Feel free to leave a like, subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified when new videos come out. See you soon.